Welcome to this next module where we review Tier 1 general considerations on the LAPG. You will again dialogue with the grade level building or district team to determine ratings and evidence for the ratings. The objective is to finish the section with each item rated and a good sense of strengths and needs to help guide prioritizing at the end of all of this, the final Tier 1 section. At this point, you have reviewed modules to cover all of the content components of Tier 1 on the LAPG. One critical question that often arises is how many minutes should be spent on literacy instruction. It's important that we prioritize instructional time. Some schools may need 120 to 150 minutes of literacy instruction per day in the primary grades and 90 to 120 minutes in third grade and beyond. This highlights the need for cross-curricular instruction. We must be embedding social studies and science in our reading instruction, not only because we have limited time, but it also helps us build upon our students' background knowledge. Stories help to connect content and help it stick. Research would indicate that at least 40% of time in K-1 should be focused on word recognition, with the remaining time spent on language comprehension. This proportion decreases in higher grade levels as students master more of the word recognition skills and move into more advanced word study. The time is important, but we also have to think about what is happening in that time, as was covered in prior sections of the LAPG and on the next slide. When considering these lengthy literacy blocks, make sure to focus on structured literacy practices that will move students forward in their reading development. This slide has a reminder of some of the shifts we need to be making to ensure that we are using the structured literacy practices evident here in the right column. And as mentioned, in many classroom, time for social studies and science have been largely eliminated in favor of longer literacy blocks. Unfortunately, this misses a critical component of language learning, which is building knowledge of informational topics. We need to think strategically about how we ensure we are providing opportunities to build background through social studies and science content. This final section is also the time to review what effective differentiated instruction looks like in Tier 1 classrooms. Every year, our students span a range of needs from those struggling with developing grade level reading skills to those requiring enrichment opportunities. In order to best meet the needs of our students, we need to consider when and how small group instruction is provided to target specific group needs. Teacher directed groups should be homogeneous so that time for targeted instruction and practice opportunities can be maximized. Not surprisingly, the students with the most intensive needs should meet with the teacher in small group instruction most frequently in a smaller group and for the longest time so that we can accelerate that progress. A quick reminder that flexible small group instruction is an evidence-based practice. When thinking about the purpose of each of our small groups, which are determined with our screening, diagnostic, and additional classroom data, Groups may serve two different purposes, depending on the student needs in that group. First, checking, reinforcing, or teaching key skills in the curriculum scope and sequence. Or, for our students with greater needs, providing additional practice on areas of focus for that particular group. And a final reminder that simply having small groups is not enough. We need to ensure that students are appropriately placed in those groups to best meet their needs and have effective classroom stations and work activities so that students have independent work that is also helping them practice their reading skills and move forward. Now that you have this shared background, it's time to dig into the general considerations section of the LAPG.